Well, you're listening to Quad Dot Rocks, God of the World and Other Things. I'm Kenny Price, your host. Our mission, you got it, advancing equilibrium in the midst of an agitated world. Hey, this is Season 18, Episode 381, Title, Night Watchman Needed. Subtitle, We Need a Watchman for the Night and a Guardian for the Day. 2 Samuel chapter 11 says, One evening David got up from his bed and strolled around on the roof of the palace. From the roof he saw a woman bathing, a very beautiful woman. Wow, my friend, we would all live better lives if we were to pay attention to the embarrassing stories God tells of past saints who fell into sin and experienced embarrassing moral failure. When we see great people of the Bible like King David, who by all accounts was a stellar individual of whom God himself called a man after God's own heart, when we see someone like him fall to the point of a murder by proxy, it needs to sink into our souls that we too are extremely vulnerable to fall into sin. We are never out of the reach of temptation. Regardless of where we are on the planet, we are never beyond the allurement and enticements of evil. The morning opens with danger, and the shades of evening find us still in jeopardy. If we're Christians, we are well kept by God, that's no doubt. But misery and trouble comes to us if we go into the world or even dare to walk in our own houses with our guards down, our heads in the clouds, or our minds tired and distracted. Those of us lulled into a false sense of security are more exposed to danger than any others. Sin's shield of defense is self-confidence. As king of Israel, David should have been engaged in fighting the Lord's battles, but instead he remained at Jerusalem and gave himself up to luxurious relaxation. It's manifested in the fact that he got up out of his bed at evening instead of going to bed and going to sleep. David had it all as a king, wealth, power, fame, unbridled freedom, multiple wives, and concubines. We don't really like to talk about the term concubines because it's an unpleasant moral thought in our modern minds, but David had many concubines. Concubines had less rights than wives, but were fair game for sexual relations, which makes David's sin of lust for another man's wife and his subsequent adultery an even more glaring revelation of deep-seated, vulnerable sexual appetite. David was in the crosshairs of idleness and luxury. Idleness and luxury are two prime, cunning, and opportunistic predators that act as agents or tools for the devil's destructive forces. Idleness is that state of being inactive or doing nothing. It implies a lack of productive or purposeful activity. Luxury refers to the indulgence in comfort, pleasure, or wealth that goes beyond what is considered necessary. It often implies a lavish or extravagant lifestyle. Those of us who engage in idleness and luxury become vulnerable or easy targets for the corruption that arises from within our own hearts and the fiery darts of the evil one. My friend, now before you get confused, this is not just a discussion against the concept of idleness or the states of idleness or luxury, but these are two points at which David had come into the crosshairs of Satan's attack through idleness and luxury. David was in the process of being taken down by both predators at the very moment he looked down on that naked woman taking a bath. My friend, he was close enough in viewing distance that he could tell she was beautiful, and he was immediately aroused to make her his object of sexual satisfaction. David was in the wrong place at just the right time and crossed over quickly to the lust of the flesh, adultery, and murder. If you're not familiar with the full story, click on the link in the show notes and it will take you to 2 Samuel chapter 11 and 12. You can read chapter 11, then hit the forward button to read the next chapter. Personal soul stagnation, neglection, and self-confidence soon yields a dense tangle of weeds, briars, and rottenness in our lives. We all need the restricting love of Jesus to keep us active and useful. My friend, let me say that again. This is something that is truth for all. We all need the restricting love of Jesus to keep us active and useful. This should be our robust prayer in this new year. Lord, keep me active and useful for your kingdom's work. My friend, we need to be active and useful for God's kingdom work, especially in year 2024. In the middle of working on this podcast, a dear friend of mine, someone I've known for over 40 years, texted me with deep concerns about the things that are being spoken of in the news regarding this election cycle and all the mayhem that's 
revolving around it to the point of making the statement concerned that we may be on the verge of civil war. Dear friend, in the middle of this mayhem, in the middle of this weirdness, in the middle of this activity, the best thing that you and I can do is take stock of ourselves and do all that we can to ensure that we are being active and useful for God's kingdom work. Holy Spirit set parameters and guardrails in our lives are good things. We flourish when the Holy Spirit is our watchman for the night and our guardian for the day. When we see the king of Israel sluggishly leaving his couch at the close of the day and falling at once into temptation, let's take warning and set holy watchfulness to guard the door. Perhaps King David was innocent in his intentions when he went to his housetop. Perhaps he was going there for retreat and devotion. If so, the yellow caution light should be flashing for all of us to count no place, however secret, a sanctuary from sin. Diesel fuel has a higher flash point compared to gasoline. Flash point is the temperature at which a substance produces enough vapor to ignite when exposed to an open flame or heat source. Diesel fuel requires glow plugs rather than spark plugs to ignite. The diesel glow plug preheats the air to aid in spontaneous combustion due to compression, while the gasoline spark plug generates a spark to ignite pre-mixed air fuel mixture. My friends, our hearts are prone to vulnerability to sin akin to gasoline is to spark plug. The low flash point of the human heart means it's easy to ignite its passions with just a spark. And my friend, with the sparks of sin so plentiful in our culture, we all need to use diligence in all places to prevent a blaze. Jeremiah 17.9 reminds us that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Satan can climb housetops, the workplace office, and the pastor's office. How many more of our key pastors and religious leaders will fall before we see an exercise of great caution modeled for us by those who should be diligently on guard? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 says, Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. This verse is a cautionary statement urging us to be vigilant and humble recognizing our own vulnerability to moral or spiritual lapses. It emphasizes the importance of self-awareness and a reliance on God's strength to avoid falling into temptation or sin. Even if we could shut out that terrible beast, the devil, our own vices are enough to work our ruin unless God's grace prevents it. Friend, we need to beware of evening temptations as well as the day. We need to jettison the false sense of self-sufficiency and security. The sun may be down, but sin is up. We need a watchman for the night, as well as a guardian for the day. Our prayer needs to be daily, O oh, Holy Spirit of God, please keep us from all evil both day and night. And Lord, keep us active and useful for your kingdom's sake. And with that, my friend, I bid you peace.